Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I, that's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counterspy. Washington calling David Harding, Counterspy. Washington calling David Harding, Counterspy. Harding, Counterspy, calling Washington. United States counterspies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the cold-blooded professor. Another counterspy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola, hits a spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. The sun was just fading, and the shadows were disappearing along a country road about a hundred miles west of Chicago, on the outskirts of a certain college town, Lipton, Illinois. A large black sedan, moving slowly, came to a full stop, and the driver spoke to a farmer beside the road. Say, uh, I wonder if you can tell me that house up on the hill there, for rent? Oh, no, that's the professor's. Oh, Professor who? Horn, Professor Horn. He teach at the college here? No, nope. everybody says he's a genius. Writes big articles for scientific papers. Inventor, too. How long has he lived there? Oh, about five years. Nice fellow when he comes to town. Nice smile. Folks like him. He have many visitors? Don't seem to like visitors, mister. Got a lady housekeeper, though. Oh, is she a nice person? Oh, you can take her or leave her. About 50. Homely. Good, I guess, but uh, homely. How old is Professor Horn? Oh, pressing 57 hard, maybe. Say, you want to know an awful lot, mister. Going up there? I might. Thanks for the information. Goodbye. Professor Horn, where do you want these books to go? The left-hand shelf, Anna, next to the books on nuclear fission. I say, I'd be glad to see a plain, ordinary novel in this library for once. My dear, the only books worth reading are scientific, factual works. <laughs> Look at these. The Anatomy of Toxicology. Treatise on Molecular Growth and Decay. Uh, what's this one? My scientific diary. I'll uh, put that one away. In that closet you never wanted me to look in? Oh, you should let me do that. Your lame leg gets tired so easy. You know I never want my leg mentioned, Anna. And I never could understand why you won't let me go down cellar and see some of your inventions. I have a lifelong principle, Anna. Better to anticipate than to regret. Meanwhile, please bear in mind that I pay you well, and this does not include your asking questions... Somebody's at the door. There's a black sedan in the driveway. Well, go see who it is, but don't bring anyone in unless absolutely necessary. I won't, Professor. Close that door, Anna. Of course. Yes? I'd like to see Professor Horn, please. He's busy. My credentials. L.D. Cameron, United States Counter-Spies. 
This way, Mr. Cameron. Thank you. Professor Horn, Mr. Cameron of the Counter Spies. Thank you, Anna. That will be all. Mr. Cameron, I live on an ironclad schedule. I should now be in my laboratory downstairs, hard at work. I trust you can be brief. Two nights ago, at 11.07 p.m. in Amberville, 42 miles south of here, the Farmers Exchange Bank was robbed of $121,000 in cash. The robber used a very ingenious electronic method of silencing the vault alarm system. However, the car used by the robber went through a puddle of oil and left certain tire tracks. Am I being brief enough? No, but uh, continue. Every garage within 50 miles of Amberville has been checked for a car with those treads. The car in your garage has those tire treads. That's a coincidence, Mr. Cameron. That's no coincidence, Professor Horn. I'm placing you under arrest on suspicion of robbing the Amberville Bank. Well, this is upsetting, Mr. Cameron. Leave that drawer alone. Put your hands in the air. I said put your hands in the air. Huh? As you say. I heard a shot. What happened? Oh, I see. How'd you shoot him? There's no gun in your hand, Professor. See under my coat, Anna? My invention, a small flat-handled gun strapped alongside my chest. And a wire up through your sleeve. When I raised my hand, it fired the gun. Now, no more questions. We're leaving, Anna. Help me unpack the closet. <laughs> so at last, I'll see what you keep in there. Stacks of money. You will pack this money into those two suitcases, Anna. All right. How about these two small packages? I don't touch them. What? I'm never going to be captured alive, Anna. There's enough explosive in this package to kill me and anyone else around. And uh, this is a bottle of vitriolic powder to throw into police officers' faces in close quarters. It burns frightfully. I hope you never have to use it. As I told you, it is better to anticipate than to regret. You, uh, you will pack this, too, Anna. All right, Professor Horn, you've been wearing a wig. Some fools wait until they're escaping to disguise themselves. I've been disguising myself for ten years. Now I'll return to what I really look like. You look ten years younger without that wig. And one thing more, this built-up shoe, which has made it appear that I limp. Ah, two. Good legs. So you haven't been lame at all. <laughs> Professor Horn has now disappeared off the face of the earth. From now on, Anna, you will call me Mr. Harris. Now, let us get on with the packing. What about the body of that man on the floor? Oh, I have everything planned, Anna. Beautifully planned. The three of us are leaving together. <laughs> driving some time, Anna. You're getting hungry. Yes, Professor Hawk. I mean, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Here, I have some candy bars in my pocket. Take one. Thank you. Mr. Harris, do you know where this side road goes? Yes, through the most deserted portion of the state. <laughs> Even so, Cameron's body may be found over there in the barn. Oh, not for weeks. If then. You think the car's safe? I'll get rid of it as soon as I've hidden my money and securities in these hills against the future. What will we live on meanwhile? <laughs> Anna, I can get all the money I want any time. You forget my constant studies of crime techniques, of scientific methods, even of murder, by accident, by weapons, and by poison. <laughs> Wasn't the candy bar good, Anna? <laughs> I can't see you. You 
poisoned me. Of course, Anna. You're the only person in the world who knows what I really look like. How could you expect to go on living? Chicago, from Harding. Peters and I are flying to join you at Professor Horn's house immediately. Allow nothing to be disturbed. Peters, one of the strangest houses I've ever been in. Yes. And people in the town say it's haunted, Mr. Harding. It is, Edwards. With the invisible presence of a fantastically clever man. In the entire house, not one fingerprint, except of the woman. Several tradespeople in the town say Horn always wore gloves. Always? Horn spread the story that he once burned his hands very badly in an experiment. Uh, it might be true, Peter. Again, it might not. He saw his laboratory in the cellar. Yeah. And look at these books. Chemergy and Practical Applications. Calculus and the Theory of Relativity. Works on atomic energy, chemistry, poison, explosives. Takes an extraordinary man to absorb all that, Dave. Horn's obviously extraordinary. And a genius at covering up. We know one of our own men was murdered here. And there's not a clue. Not even one piece of handwriting. Well, this man may strike again soon. Edwards. Yeah. Instruct every counter-spy field officer throughout the country to report immediately all crimes committed for gain except where the criminal is definitely known. Yes, sir. Well, I'm leaving for a while. What are you up to, Dad? Somewhere there's a clue to this man. I want to flounder around a little by myself. See what I can turn up. <laughs> Dr. Connors, in one of the grocery stores in town, a clerk told me that a year ago, Professor Horn wasn't feeling well, and that led me to you. Yes, Mr. Harding, I did treat Professor Horn a year or so ago. Huh? Now, this is the record of his visit, Mr. Harding. Did he pay you by cash or check? Uh, cash, to my nurse. I recall he wore gray doe-skin gloves uh, throughout his visit here. Did he mention having burned his hands? Yes, but he never removed the gloves in my presence. Oh. Uh -huh. Did he limp or walk normally? Well, frankly, Mr. Harding, I didn't notice. Uh, but one thing may interest you. I, I took some x-rays of his stomach. Here, let me show you. These three show all that's important. These, these small, darker patches. Ulcers? Peptic ulcers. A severe case, Mr. Harding. A horn is one of those apparently uh, iron-nerved men. He gives few outward signs of emotion. Well, they often make the mistake of thinking they have no emotion. Well, actually, they do. And their nervousness and emotion seek other outlets. In this case, peptic ulcers caused by a very high-strung nervous condition. Doctor, did you give him a prescription? Yes, a special bismuth powder compound. He tried them, and uh, they gave him relief. Do you think he's cured of his ulcers yet? Well, I would doubt it very much. Well, then, Doctor, he'll be buying bismuth powders more or less regularly. I assume so, Mr. Harding. Dr. Connors, I'm very grateful to you. This is the first clue to this cold-blooded scientific killer we found. The big question is, where will he strike next? Good 
Miss Lawrence, file these chemical orders, please. But, Mr. Johnson, I never handle these local Denver orders. Now, Miss Lawrence, we must... Oh! Well, well, what is it? What's the matter with all of you? Good day, everybody. Why stop working? Don't point those guns at us. Are you the boss here? Why, yes. I like your desk. Move away from it quickly. Yes, all right. Now, listen, everyone. I have only a few seconds. I've just robbed the finance company office down the hall of $130,000. And there's a big commotion on the ground floor. Of course, the police expect me to leave that way, but instead, I'm going to put my two guns on this desk, cover them with this newspaper. Now, get this. In a moment, the police may come in here. If one of you makes a false move, I shoot. And I'm a perfect shot. Does everybody understand? Now, I have a camera here, and I'm going to be taking your pictures. We're detectives. Anybody see anything of a stranger? A hold up, man? Why, uh, no, officer. Speak up. Did anyone here see anybody who might be a hold up man? place down the hall was stuck up. He got away. I hope you catch him, Lieutenant, but uh, just a moment. I'm taking some pictures for our sales convention. Would you mind standing there just a second, please? Don't be a fool. No, 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 no. Keep the gun in your hand. Can of nonsense. Thank you, Lieutenant. If anybody sees any suspicious-looking stranger, tell the officers who posted in the hall. Yes, we certainly will. Okay. I owe you all my thanks. You behaved very well. Why don't you leave us alone? Why, young lady, I couldn't think of it yet. Uh, stand over here, will you? I want a photograph of you. Me? That's good. Yes, you are pretty. Smile, can't you? I... I can't. Oh, come now, come now. I want a picture of that sincere, honest face. So different from your employer's. What do you mean? I noticed the chemical ingredients in that container on the shelf. Acetophenium, 2% elixir of dichlorosulfate, and trichnobiborate and colloidal suspension. An entirely ineffective combination, my dear fellow. Now, my dear, that smile. Hmm? I... Come I just... now, come, come, come. A lovely girl like you can always smile. Uh... <laughs> That's it. Hold it. Uh... Thank you. And now, everybody... I'm going out of that door. My guns are in my pockets. Remember, I have photographs of all of you. If any one of you talks to the police, I'll come back and shoot. All clear? Good day. And goodbye to you, my dear. Before we go back to Counter Spy, please listen. Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi Cola. Because one big 12 ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste. Twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, Why take less when Pepsi is best? Yes, families like yours and mine. Families all over America. They're all saying, Why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi Cola so delicious and each bottle makes two drinks. It is certainly the cola for the purchaser who thinks everybody's drinking Pepsi. Just compare it with the rest. So much more and so much finer. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. David Harding and his assistant, Harry Peters, 
or in the communications room of the counter spy field office in Chicago. Dave, from this report of that big robbery in Denver yesterday, I have a hunch it was Professor Horn. So have I, Peter. The cleverness of the planning, the daring, that camera gag. But no gloves and no limp. No, I can't account for that. And from the description, he must have been 10 or 15 years younger than Horn. Yes, but it's the tricky method of committing the crime that strikes me hardest. What's our move? Well, send out this new description of him to all police and counter spy field officers. Also, a description to all druggists in Colorado. Instruct them to watch for a stranger who may come in and order a bismuth powder compound. A man similar to this new description. Harding to Denver. Set up spot surveillance of suspect immediately, but do not alarm him. He may carry explosives or poison for self-destruction. I'm joining you by jet plane. Hardly any noise, Dave. Jet planes for me from now on. Yes, remind me to ask for a jet-propelled transport model on the next budget, Peter. Uh-oh, Denver reporting. Right. Go ahead, Denver. Edwards reporting from the drugstore where Horn just got his medicine. We have a walkie-talkie set up with all agents conducting surveillance. Do you want to be cut in? You bet your life I do. Then I'll have you cut in, sir. The suspect has turned out of my sight. Our next agent is a sedan one block up. Agent D. Agent D, is the suspect in your sight? suspect is walking down the other side of the street from me, taking his time. Uh-oh, he's walking fast now, heading straight up the street. Edward should be near him now in a taxi cab. How about it, Edward? Come in, Edward. Edward's reporting again, Mr. Harding. I'm now in a taxi, cruising about a hundred feet behind Horn, who's walking faster now. Maybe for the bus station on the corner. Uh-oh. What is it? Very pretty girl, out of the crowd to meet him. He kisses her. Now they're heading for one of the buses. Edwards, order one of our agents to drive ahead and get on the bus. We'll be with you in Denver in another hour. the layout. Horn and the girl entered that bungalow there. The place is almost entirely dark. Living room lights are on, but all the blinds are drawn. The place surrounded? Yeah, set up B. Two men at each post. You want to rush the house? Well, I want Horn alive. There's no telling what trick he might pull. Let me have your walkie-talkie. Here. Thanks. Harding to Peters. 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 Pull all agents back to set up C farther from the house. Come over to see me. We have to work out a different plan of attack. And it's got to be done. Emery, you play beautifully. Thank you, my dear. I saw you had a package from the drugstore. You're not sick or anything. Oh, no, dear. They're just bismuth powders. They help my stomach. Emery? Yes, Gilda? I feel very happy with you. I'm glad. Funny. Sometimes once in a while you meet someone you feel you've known all your life. It's only been three days, Gilda. I feel as though I'd known you all my life. And still I don't know a thing about you except that I love you. That's very sweet, Gilda. On... Un- Second thought, I do know something about you. Something you try to hide from me. And, uh, what is that, Gilda? I guess you do it because you really think I'm not very bright. 
Gilda, what is it? You are brilliant. The books you talk about, your remarks about things in the newspapers, on the radio, and and then you say it's nothing. <laughs> Compared to you, my dear, it is nothing. Emery, there's something else I know. You're uh, not as unobserving as I thought, Gilda. Uh, I mean, I think you've almost asked me to marry you, and Emery, if you do... I will. Gilda, you're the very... Oh, what was that? Ah, car crashed into the lamppost right in front of the house. Oh, no. Man seems to have been thrown from it. No, no, no. He was hit by the car. The car's racing away down the street. Those hit-and-run drivers. We've got to help him. Now, wait, Gilda. Well, we can't let him lie there. Well, very well. I'll go with you. He's badly hurt. His face is all bloody. Let's move him up on the lawn. Uh, no, 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 Gilda. You must never move an injured person. That poor man, all that blood. Let me have a closer look. Hmm? Yeah. Bones broken. No. Shock, probably very serious. Oh, no. Head contusions and a brain. Hmm. Well, that's funny. Well, what is it, Emery? I could just see better in this light. I... See what, Horn? What? What are you... There's a trick. That's right. Who oh, oh, are you? What are you doing? What? Oh, that's the eyes out. You get away from him. You hear him? Get away from him. Hold it, Peter. Oh, While I get the handcuffs on him. I've got him, Dave. Keep that wild cat off my back. Let me go. You let me go. If you... All right, young woman. We're United States counter-spies. You'd better be glad this happened. In another week, you'd have been as dead as Anna Cable, this man's housekeeper, and counter-spy agent Cameron. I can't believe it. You were right, Dave. Here's the vial on him, and I'm betting it's explosive. All right, Harding. I don't know how you found me, but you'll never keep me. Until you go to the death house, I'll see that you're kept in the safest penitentiary in the country, Horn. Come on, get going. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glassful, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot, lot more value, lot more zest, why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the cold-blooded professor. That's right, for we never expected that Professor Horn would cause your Counter Spies many more frantic hours. Only Professor Horn would use prison pants that had been washed in lemon juice or create a new appearance by stealing watch crystals and mixing them with flour, water, and wire and escape from an escape-proof penitentiary. Be sure to tune in on Thursday, day after tomorrow, for file number two, Case of a Cold-Blooded Professor on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counterspy program originated in New York and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counterspy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight.